ومن سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد So we've got about 35 minutes till Salat al-Asr Asr is at 5.30 So we'll start now And then once we pray Asr we'll resume inshallah And then carry on for about half an hour after Salah Then after that have the final The fourth and final lecture inshallah Of the uh, of the Dora And then we'll see if we get time for question and answers This lecture is entitled Afatani Yajibu al Hadaru Minhuma Al Gulumu wa Tamir or Satiya to a Salafiya or Satiya to Salafi Bainahuma. Two diseases that it is compulsory, mandatory that we avoid and stay away from. Al Gulu being extreme, excessive, and the Tamir watering down. The Sharia and being lenient when we shouldn't be lenient. And I've divided it into four parts. Al Mabhat al Awal was Sadiyatu as Salafiyati Bain al Ghulu wa Tamir. The fact that Salafiya is the middle path between being extreme and being lenient. Al Mabhat al Thani Khuduratu al Ghuluwi wa Banu Ma'ali Mahada Ma'ali Mahada al Maslak. The dangers of being extreme or exaggerating or going overboard and some of the signs of or some of the mistakes of that uh, of that methodology. The third is the dangers of watering down and some of the important or some, the, major, the most important mistakes of that maslak or that methodology. And the Mabhat al Rabi' is Nasihat al Ulama lil Muslimin fi hada shatan. The advice of the Muslim scholars uh, and the Imams with regards to this issue. So if we look at Mabhat al Awwal, the first Mabhat, it is with regards to Al Mabhat wa Sadiyat al Salafiyya. The fact that Al Salafiyya is on the middle path. And as you have heard in the last two lectures, Al Salafiyya is Al Islam. And Islam is the middle path in which Allah Jalla wa Ala revealed for His servants. قال جل وعلا وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطا لتكونوا شهداء على الناس ويكون رسول عليكم شهيدا. So Allah Jalla wa Ala said that He has made us a nation that is on the middle path, and He has made us a witness over the nations that are to come. So the manhaj of the Salafi or the Salafi manhaj. Is a manhaj that is a rabbani, mabniun ala wahi. It is a manhaj that is from Allah subhanahu wa taala, and it is built upon revelation of holding onto the Quran of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam upon the understanding of the Salaf al salih. And all of these fitan that we see now, or these two fitnas of being extreme, and which we shall explain what extreme is, and watering down have both had a bad effect or negative effect on a da'wah as salafiyya because the people that are clay are upon these two methodologies are claiming to be upon the methodology of Ahlus Sunnati wal Jama'ah so it kind of distorts the methodology of Ahlus Sunnati wal Jama'ah and it's worth mentioning that these two paths have only become prominent in the Salafi da'wah obviously they were found in the Ummah beforehand like in within the Salafi da'wah they only came prominent after the death of the great Imams like Ibn Baz rahimahullah, Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah, Imam Al-Bani rahimahullah, Al-Shaykh Muqbil rahimahullah ta'ala rahmatan wasi'a that's why a lot of the things that I'm going to mention weren't or a lot of the mistakes of these people were not done, were not practiced during the time of these Imams which shows that they're the ones that changed and other people did not change. As for the reasons why these fitan happen, number one, Qabdul Ulama. The reasons for these fitan happening is Qabdul Ulama, the scholars passing away. Allah Jal or the Prophet said, Inna Allah la yaqbadul ilmi intaza'i 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 inta
Allah doesn't take knowledge away by taking it away from the hearts of the people. Lakin rather, Allah Jalla wa'ala takes away knowledge by the death of the scholars. Until there's only ignorant people left and they give fatwa and they misguide themselves and misguide others. Number two, al-da'fu fil ilm. Being, there being a deficiency and a weakness in knowledge. Sometimes the teacher and the students are both weak in knowledge. So if the teacher is weak in knowledge, then obviously the students will be even weaker in knowledge. And that wasn't known among the Salaf. Because Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, A'lamu Nas bil Haqq. They're the most knowledgeable people with regards to the Haqq. Like when people busy themselves with fitan, then knowledge decreases. The third reason, Hubbu Tara'us. A perp people loving leadership. People loving leadership. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا أُسْنِدَ If if the affair is given to those that are not worthy of it, then wait for the sa'a. And a lot of these people, their da'wa will only come apparent when there's fitna. If there's no fitna and everyone's okay, and there's no one refuting anyone upon batil, and everyone's, alhamdulillah, upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah ala fahm salaf al-ummah, there is no place for them. There is no place for them. The only time they find people to listen to them and for them to lead people is when there's a lot of fitna. Because when there's a lot of fitna, every jahil starts to talk. So the more fitna there is, the more these ignorant people can talk. So it's in their best interest to make sure that the, uh, the, the, the da'wah is full of fawda, chaos and confusion and fitan and this one refuting that one for no reason even though he's a prominent Ahl Sunnati from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and this one saying boycott that one and stay away from this one and don't attend this one all of that is because there's chaos and there's love of leadership also Hubbu Shuhra the fourth reason is people loving recognition and wanting to be uh, praised and so on and so forth a person or a group of people wanting to be popular or famous. That is also one of the reasons why extremism takes place and watering down of the correct methodology of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah takes place. Also, Al Kadibu Sarih, the Tawiji Da'watihim. Al Kadibu Sarih, clear cut lies, the Tawiji Da'watihim, so that their Da'wah goes forth. Because if they tell the truth, then people won't listen to them. Lakin they need to lie in order for people to listen to them. That's Mabhat al Awal. Al Mabhat al Thani, the second part, is Khudurat al Ghulu, the dangers of Ghulu, and, that, and the, uh, the, the, the mistakes that these sorts of people do. And I've divided this into three parts, or Thalat Matalib. Al Matlub al Awal, Ma'na Mustalah al Ghulu, the meaning of Ma'na Mustalah al Ghulu, the meaning of Ghuluwi, what is Ghuluwi, what is it, what does it mean to be extreme? And Surah Al-Mas'ala to explain what it means. Then Al-Mabhat Al-Thani Al-Mukhalafat wal akhta al Mawjudatu fi Had al-Maslak. The mistakes that are found in those people who fall into this mistake and the foundations or the mistakes that they have fallen into. Al-Matlab Al-Thalith Al-Athar Al-Salbiyatu Al-Lati Natajat Bisawabi Hadi Al-Mukhalafat. Some of the evil effects and traces that have taken place due to this. So if we go to Al-Matlab Al-Awwal, what is the meaning of Ghulu? Or what is the meaning of uh, this word? It means غَلَى فِي الْأَمْرِ يَغْلُوا غُلُوًا أَيْجَاوَزَ الْحَدَّ فِيهِ It is to exceed, to be excessive, and to be extreme. An extreme, or to be excessive, is blameworthy. قَالَ جَلَّ وَعَلَى يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ لَا تَغْلُوا فِي دِينِكُمْ O oh, people of the book, la taghlu fi deenukum. Do not be extreme in your religion. Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La tuturuni kama atrati nasara ibn Maryam, fa innama ana abduhu, faqulu abdullahi wa rasooluh. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited us from praising him excessively. Salawat Allah wa sallam wa alayhi. Like the nasara, the people of the book, or the nasara, the Christians, how they used to praise, and how they did with Isa alayhi salam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited us from being extreme in that, even with regards to his right, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, verily, I am abd, faqulu abdullahi wa rasulu. Say, I am the abd or the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the servant of, uh, and the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, ghulu 
is something which is not praiseworthy. It is something that has been dispraised in the Quran and in the Sunnah. If we look at Al Matlab Al Thani, Al Matlab Al Thani, and this is the most important Matlab from all of the uh, from this section, it is the Mukhalafat or the Akhta and the mistakes that these people have fallen into. So often you will hear, what mistake do we have? What mistake do we have? So now that you, inshallah, write these mistakes down, you can easily identify the mistakes that these people fall, in, fall into with regards to being extreme in the religion. Number one, al-mukhalafatul ula, the very first mistake, جعل الولاء والبراء متعلقا بشيخ معين أو معينين To create and to make love and hate, oath, uh, allegiance and this association for the, sh- for the reason of one sheikh or because of one sheikh or based upon one sheikh or a group of mashayikh. So you will find that every time a certain sheikh refutes an individual, they also refute that individual. Every time a sheikh praises a certain individual, they will also praise that certain individual. And that shows that their allegiance, their love and hatred is based upon that sheikh's ahkam or that sheikh's ruling based on individuals. And this is incorrect for two reasons. Number one, it contradicts the Salafi methodology. Because according to the Salafi methodology, our love, our wala' wal bara, our love and allegiance, and this association should be based upon the Quran and the Sunnah upon the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih. Based on the Quran and the Sunnah upon the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih. Lakin when you leave that understanding and you base it on a certain shaykh whereby everyone that agrees with him is shaykh al-Islam and everyone that disagrees with him is a da'i' mumayyah, saqid and so on and so forth then that shows you have connected yourself and connected your love and allegiance to that specific individual. The second mistake in with regards to that is that in it there's taqdeesu al-ashkhas and there's ta'assub, having fanaticism, uh, whereby there's sanctification or that person is glorified to the extent that they can make no mistake. It is impossible that they make a mistake And that obviously doesn't fit the bill With regards to the scholars of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah Here we have Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah Saying Kalami sawab yahtamilu al-khata' Kalami sawab What I say, my opinion or what I say On a certain masala is correct Yahtamilu al-khata' It can be mis- incorrect Lakin and the opposite goes. Yani kalam khasmi, the statement of the other person is khata is wrong, lakin it can be correct. Lakin how they make it out to be is kalam shaykhi wahyun laysa bi khata'in. Oh, la yumkin an yakhta, an yukhti. That is how they make it out. And that comes from taqdis al ashkhas. And that has not been known in the Salafi methodology right from the time of the Salaf al Salih up until. About 25 years ago Or maybe even less Compare that to the statement of Imam Malik rahimahullah, Where he said Kullu ahadun yu'khadun minhu wa yurad alayhi Illa sahibu hadha al-qabr Every person's statement is taken and is rejected Except for the person in that qabr Meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Also listen to Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah ta'ala He says Wa laysa li ahadin It is not permissible for ahad For anyone An yansiba lil ummati shakhsan That he appoints a person in this ummah Yad'u ila tariqatihi That he calls to his path Wa yuwali Wa yuadi alayha That he gives allegiance and uh, Hatred or allegiance and enmity Based upon that individual Ghayr al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Except the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Except the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَلَا يَنْصِبُ لَهُمْ كَلَامًا يُوَالِ عَلَيْهِ وَيُعَادِي غَيْرَ كَلَامِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ غَيْرَ كَلَامِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَيْهِ الْأُمَّةِ And also with regards to speech there is nothing that they can make in connecting الْوَلَاءُ وَالْبَرَاءُ to love and allegiance 
except the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the words of the uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet, and that which the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have had a consensus upon. طيب. بَلْ هَذَا مِنْ فِعْلِ أَهْلِ الْبِدْعِ الَّذِينَ يَنْصِبُونَ لَهُمْ شَخْصًا أَوْ كَلَامًا يُفَرِقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْأُمَّةِ يُوَالُونَ بِهِ يُوَالُونَ بِهِ عَلَى ذَلِكَ الْكَلَامِ So, the Imam is saying, رحمه الله, Shaykh al-Islam, رحمه الله تعالى, that rather, that is the methodology of Ahlul Bid'ah, whereby they say that this person, whoever is in agreement with him, he's upon the haqq. And whoever uh, doesn't agree with him, then he's upon batil and falsehood. And I'll give you two examples from our contemporary examples, or some examples, some examples. You've probably heard of a person called Salman Aud and Safar al-Hawali. Those two individuals, and other than them, uh, during the first Gulf War, which was in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, uh, they, or the ulama of Saudi, gave a fatwa, and these two individuals opposed that fatwa. These two individuals opposed that fatwa. And they encouraged the Shabab to almost rebel against the government. Now, the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah that resided in that land and other scholars refuted them and declared them to be Mubtadi'ah. And rightly so. However, at the time, to Sheikh Imam Al Bani, rahimahullah, he did not know them properly and he used to have Husnul Dhan of them. He used to have Husnul Dhan, he used to say that maybe it's not as people are making out. He used to have good thought of them, as we're meant to have with regards to the Muslim. Now, my issue is not with regards to the Husnul Dhan that Imam Al Bani had or the refutation that they were refuted, rightly so for. Like when this did happen, Imam al Bani, rahimahullah, his students and other mashayikh of the Mamluk and so on, they all refuted these two individuals. Those mashayikh that refuted these two mubtadi'ah, they did not go to al Bani and hold him at knife point and say, Ya al Bani, badd'i' fulanan. Make him say that Salman Auda and Safar Hawali are mubtadi'ah. You with me so far? So they did not come to Albani and say make tabdi' of Albani and make tabdi' of these two mubtadi'ah. طيب. Nor did Imam Albani rahimahullah go to them and say to them you are ghulat or extremist. Why have you made tabdi' of them? So note that these ones made tabdi' of them and this one, this Imam had good thought of them. طيب. In the end, obviously, it was clear to Sheikh Albani rahimahullah as well, and he warned against him. Like in the Mahal al-Shahid is, did anyone, did Albani go to individuals, hold his students by the collar and say, Badda' fulan, why haven't you taken Muqtad? Why haven't you refuted them? Why haven't you stood beside me? Hmm? No, he didn't say that. And note, this is a live example that, yani, it's these waqa' you can't really change. It's not like things that you can rub out. That's the waqa' that we lived in. That was the waqa that was around at the time. So no one forced the other person to take a certain stance. Now, if that was what was practiced during the time of Imam al-Bani and Ibn Baz, and then when they died, something else was practiced, Billahi alaykum, who changed? The one that is saying, don't force your opinion upon a person, or the one saying, you have to, force, you have to follow this shaykh? Who's the one that changed? The one that changed is the one that is saying, if my shaykh made tabdi' of this person, you must make tabdi' of this person, as we shall see in the mukhalafat. Lakin, the, this asal goes back to having al-wala wal bara lil haq Allegiance, love, allegiance and support to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And anyone upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah, upon the understanding of the Salaf of Salih. Lakin, we find those individuals who have their connections to a certain shaykh or a certain few shaykh, and whatever they say goes to the extent that some of them, some shabab would go to them and they would say to them, right, if you want our support, and this has happened, if you want our support, two things. First and foremost, some of our people have to be in your committee. Should you establish a mosque or a center, they have to be in your committee. Secondly, you have to take the jar, the refutations of a sheikh fulani, a certain sheikh, on everyone else, on this individual, on that individual, and that individual. If that is not ta'asub, you tell me what ta'asub is. 
That's exactly what the Hizbiyun do. The Al-Mukhalafah Al-Thaniyah, Bid'ah to Tahazub Al-Salafi. The Bid'ah of making a Salafiyyah into a Hizb, into a party, into an organization, and creating partisanship. And that contradicts, contradicts the essence of a Da'u Salafiyyah. Because a Da'u Salafiyyah is not connected to individuals, it is connected to Qala Allah wa Qala Rasul wa Ajma alayhi Salaf. The Salaf said, Qala Allah wa Qala Rasul. Like when you connect it to a certain group of people Whereby if you come to our masjid then enter Salafi And if you don't you're not a Salafi If you go to a certain place and you don't go to the Salafis of that location Then you are not a Salafi And it has been said Sometimes you would get students that have now just graduated from Medina for example And they would come to a location And they would get picked up on that And, say, and they would probably try to start giving da'wah and teaching the aqeed of the Salaf al-Salih And it would be said to them Why have you come here without first consulting us? As if it's some sort of landlord patch That you have to seek permission for Why have you come into this area Without announcing, your, announcing the fact that you're here now? Don't you know that we're here? That is similar to what, what the shabab What the youth have now Where they say postcode, postcode wars That person Graduated from the Jamaat Islamiyah or any other institute, and now he wants to call to Allah Jalla wa Ala and his messenger. Where do you come into it? Where Mahaluk min al Arab? Where do you come into it? Why does he have to announce his uh, the fact that he's here? Imam al Abdul Muhsin al Abad Hafidahullah he says that this is actually the tariqa of the Ikhwan al Muslimin, and I'm going to read his statement to you. He says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Yaqul Rahimahullah. ويزداد الأمر سوءا أن يحصل شيء من ذلك في بعض البلاد الأوروبية and that actually applies to us he says in his book رفق أهل السنة مرة أخرى he says and it, is, it becomes worse when he was talking about this sort of تحزب and partisanship he says ويزداد الأمر سوءا what makes it even worse is when you find in some of the countries in Europe ونحوها and those that are like similar to it التي فيها الطلاب من أهل السنة بضاعة مزجاة وهم بحاجة ماسة حاجة بحاجة شديدة شديدة إلى تحصيل العلم النافع وسلامة من فتنة التهاوج بسبب تقليد في التجريح he goes when you find students of knowledge from أهل السنة in these lands so the person I'm mentioning is Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al-Abad Hafidahullah Ta'ala The Imam of Medina Who's been teaching the Prophet's Masjid for about 40 plus years Who every time he finishes the Ummahat to sit he starts again And anyone that's gone to Medina will know him that Rather even if they don't go to Medina they know him Hafidahullah He says that in these countries in Europe for example There are students of knowledge Whose knowledge as it is in general is not and It's not a lot in general and they are actually in need of attaining knowledge. They are in dire need of seeking knowledge. طيب. Lacking, even having said that, they have not been free from this, this fitting of making hijrah upon one, 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 cell, uh, one another. بِسَبَبِ التَّقْلِيد فِي التَّجْرِيحِ بِسَبَبِ Because of taqlid, blind following فِي التَّجْرِيحِ In a person refuting another person. وَهَذَا الْمَنْهَجُ شَبِيهٌ بِطَرِيقَةِ الْإِخْوَانِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ and that methodology is similar to the methodology of Ikhwan al-Muslimin. The one that uh, who said about them, the Mu'assis or the, the person that founded their organization said about them, he's Hassan al-Banna. So these are the words of Hassan al-Banna. فَدَعْوَتُكُمْ أَحَقُّ أَنْ يَأْتِيهَا النَّاسِ Your da'wah is more befitting that people come to it. وَلَا تَأْتِي أَحَدًا And it doesn't go to anybody. إِذْ هِيَ جِمَاعُ كُلِّ خَيْقٍ Because it encompasses all types of good. وَغَيْرُهَا لَا يَسْلَمْ مِنَ النَّقْسِ And other calls, other da'wahs, they've all got deficiencies in it. So Hassan al-Banna said to his people, what? يا أخي إخوان المسلمين your دعوة is complete من جميع الوجوه every way everything you can think of ما شاء الله your دعوة is complete لكن all of the other دعوات are deficient therefore people should come to you and you don't go to other people بالله عليكم doesn't it resemble something طيب he says رحمه الله وقال and he said وموقفنا من الدعوات المختلفة and our stance from the other دعوات that are different التي ضغط في هذا العصر that has يعني gone gone overboard overboard or excessive in this زمن Hassan talking فَفَرَّقَتِ الْقُلُوبَ And it uh, diverted the hearts and caused division in the hearts وَبَلْبَلَتِ الْأَفْكَارَ And it caused confusion with the Afkar and the ideologies أَنَّ زِنَهَا أَنْ 
نزنها بميزان دعوتنا طيب all of these other calls we put it on the scale of our da'wa فما وافقها فمرحبا به anything that in, is in accordance with our da'wa فيا أهلا وسهلا مرحبا به then we take it on board وما خالفها and anything that goes against it and anything that goes against it فنحن براء منه then we are free from it then we are what? free from it so those pe- those people who make salafiyah into a hizb where you anta ma'i or diddi you're either with me or against me then they in reality have fallen into the methodology of the hizbiyun the methodology of ikhwan muslimin طيب what does the salafi say lakin hasan al banna said that where our da'wah is the one that people should come to and we use the scale what our da'wah is the criterion the salafi the sunni will say the criterion is qala allah wa qala rasul wa qala salaf faqat allah said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and the salaf said that's what the salaf will say to you so the salaf will say to ya akhi i don't care about you i don't care about your name where you're from are you calling to qala allah wa qala rasul wa qala salaf you say yeah tayyib khalas anta ala al haqq wa anta akhi you're my brother and you're upon the truth you can be in timbuktu it doesn't bother me you don't have to announce and clock into my organization before giving da'wah. And that's what a person should be happy with. If someone's calling to the da'wah of Allah Jalla wa'ala, you should be happy. That's why Sufyan Authority and the Salaf, they would say, if a, announcement, if a person, if it's said to you that there's a rajal in the other side of Mashriq, who's upon the sunnah, فَبَلِّغْهُ salam, Say salam alaykum to him. تَرَحَمْ عَلَيْهِ Say حَفِظَهُ اللَّهِ And make du'a for him. Why? Because he's upon the sunnah. Is that not the second mukhalafah that we have? What was the first mukhalafah? Basing al-wala' wal bara on a certain shaykh. Hada huwa al-waqi'. Basing on a certain shaykh or a certain, certain few mashaykh. Tayyib. To the extent the other mashaykh are not taken into consideration. And I'll give you a, 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 str- a very strange story that happened with me. And I never tell you stories because I don't want to, it's not يعني, a good thing to do. Lakin, the reason why I'm telling this Because I know you will all find it strange During the time I was in Riyadh some, A few people came to me And they advised me Jazahumullah khairan And I obviously didn't agree with them What they were saying Obviously If you don't agree on something What does Allah Jalla say? Jalla wa'ala say Fas'alu Ahla dhikin kuntum ala ta'lamu Alhamdulillah we're in Riyadh Every other corner there's a alim from Ahl Sunnah. So I said, Taif, since we have a dispute on this, let's go to Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan. You would think, what would you think the answer would be? Naam, Fabiha wa Naam, Halum Mailayna. Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan, Fabiha wa Naam. Then personally, me, if a Mu'tazili came to me, Khwani came to me and said, let's go to Sheikh Fawzan to judge between us. Tahal, let's have, let's go. I wouldn't have any issues with it. Me being me, I thought, خلاص. فبيهاو نعم. Let's go to Sheikh Fawzan. His office from the Jamia is about 30 minutes, 35 minutes, give or take. We go. لا, don't go. We're not going to go. لما? No, we're not going to go. Why? Because Sheikh Fawzan is not going to say anything. What do you mean he's not going to say anything? Yeah, because he's not going to say anything. I said, obviously, he's going to say something. He goes, no, we've already been to him. Go, what happened? Go, nothing. So what do you mean nothing happened? Obviously, he must have said something to you. And they said, لا, he didn't say nothing. Just looked at us. Allah Jalla wa'ala is my witness. If they were lying, it's up to them. But that's what they told me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known. And as you probably guessed, I don't know the ilm al ghayb So, I was genuinely surprised. But what made me surprised even more was the fact that they said to me, Certain organizations have come from the United Kingdom to have their Umrah trip. And they're in Medina. So let's go to Medina for this affair. Yeah, Rajul, Medina is like 800 kilometers away. It's the end of term, we're going for exams. It's easier for us to go 30 minutes down to Sheikh Fawzan than you want me to go to 800 kilometers. Huh? Isn't that surprising, Shabab? Fine. <laughs> Not only that, I mentioned about seven other mashayikh from the scholars of Riyadh, the mashayikh of Riyadh, and they weren't taken into consideration. Story ends there. 
you take from it what you want to take. Wallahu ala ma qulu shahid. Allah Jalla wa ala is my witness for that happening. So that is the first mistake. Al wala wal bara ala shaykh al muayyin or muayyinin. The second mukhalafa is making a salafiyah into a hizb. What did Sheikh Abdul Salam Burj just say when we were studying Usul al Da'wah Salafiyah a few weeks ago? He said that when we say salafiyah, we don't mean a salafiyah that has made it into a hizb, an organization. So? And exactly the same thing Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah says. Tayyib. So that is, and I've just read to you the words of Hassan al Banna that Sheikh Abdul Muhsan Abad he mentions. And Abdul Muhsan Abad, Hafidahullah, Sheikh Abdul Muhsan, he mentioned this in order to refute this Hassan. Tayyib. How many mukhalafat do we have? Two. The third mukhalaf is إِذَا بَدَّعَ شَيْخٌ رَجُلًا ذَهَبُوا إِلَى النَّاسِ وَطَلَبُوا مِنْ جَمِيعِ النَّاسِ أَنْ يُبَدِّعُوهُ If a person, if a shaykh makes tabdi' of a certain individual, they will go to every other person and say to them, you have to make tabdi' You should also make tabdi' Shaykh Fulan badda'a Fulan. A Shaykh Fulan, he has made tabdi' of someone. Lazim to badda'a Fulan. And you have to also take a stance on this. You have to make tabdi' of him. And they say, badda'a Fulan wa illa badda'anak. Make tabdi' of Fulan, otherwise you're going to be a mubtadi' tomorrow. No, today. If you don't make tabdi' of him, then you're going to be a mubtadi'. Tayyip. When Imam al-Bani was asked about this, Qa'ida, have you understood the Surah al-Mas'ala? A shaykh declares another shaykh to be a mubtadi' And I'm talking about the itaag of Ahlul Sunnah The perimeters of Ahlul Sunnah I'm not talking about Ahlul Bid'ah A shaykh makes another shaykh to be a person of Bid'ah He could be right, he could be mistaken خلاص. That's not the issue here Lakin to go to everybody else with a microphone and say What's your stance? And what's your stance? If he says he's a mubtadi' Alhamdulillah, you're upon the haq, you're quh, Upon clarity and if he says, لا, he's not مبتدئ, لا, and there's something wrong with you. That is the Surah Al-Mas'ala. First and foremost, why is that wrong? Because, as you have all learned, when you were studying the basics of Usul Al-Thalatha, العلم ينقسم إلى قسمين. Knowledge is of two types. فقدو, كفاية, and فقدو, عين. The refuting Ahlul Bid'a and refuting an individual and clarifying them, فقدو, كفاية, فقدو كفاية. Alhamdulillah, that shaykh, Jazahullahu khayran, he has refuted him. Khalas, what do you want from me? Who gave you the permis permission to do tawaf, like the tabliq, around everyone else, and then start to say, you have to make tabdi' of a certain individual? Shaykh Albani says, Rahimahullah. Shaykh Albani says, Rahimahullah. When they asked him about this qa'id of, man lamba yubadda' fa huwa mubtadi' if a person doesn't make tabdi' of another person, then he's also a mubtadi' He said, من أين جاءت هذه القواعد? Where did these principles come from? من أين جاءت? ومن قعدها? And who is the one that laid them down? ليس الشقدا أبدا. It is never a condition. أن من كفر الشخص. And if a person makes takfir of someone, says he's a kafir. He's not even going on to tabdi'. He's going a step higher. Takfir. He's a kafir. أن من كفر الشخص. وأقام عليه الحجة. And establishes the proof upon him. أن يكون كل الناس معه في التكفير. Takfir. It doesn't mean that all of the people have to be with him in his takfir. He can be a person that has some sort of interpretation that might be correct or incorrect. Like he might be a person who has interpretation. And this other scholar, he sees that it is not permissible to declare takfir of this individual. كذلك التفسيق والتبديع. Likewise, we're going to pray when I finish this, which is this about two minutes. We're going to pray in two minutes, inshallah. كذلك التفسيق والتبديع. Likewise, making someone to be a فاسق, declaring to be a فاسق, or declaring to be a مبتدع. فهذه الحقيقة شوف. فهذه الحقيقة this reality من فتن العصر الحاضر. It is from the fitten of the current time that we're living in. Imam Al Bani says. ومن ومن تصرع بعد الشباب في الدعاء العلم أن the hastiness of those shabab who claim knowledge. هذا باب واسع that is a spacious, a vast channel. قد يرى عالم أمرا واجبا. A alim might see something to be واجب. ويراه الآخر ليس كذلك. And another might see it not to be واجب. And I'm talking about في دمن أهل السنة from the scholars of أهل السنة. 
كما اختلف العلماء من قبل ومن بعد like the scholars have differed in the past and now and they continue to do so لأن باب الاجتهاد because the باب of اجتهاد legal reasoning looking into the evidences لا يلزم لا يلزم الآخرين بأن يأخذوا برأيه it is not binding if it is a مسألة of اجتهاد that can accept legal reasoning based on evidence the Sheikh says rahimahullah it is not binding upon others to take his opinion it is not binding upon others to take his opinion طيب so that is Imam al-Bani rahimahullah saying that if a alim in regards to that if someone makes tabdi' of someone that that is an ijtihad that that Imam has done jazahullahu khayran may Allah reward him if he's correct he has two rewards if he's mistaken he has one reward why? Because the Prophet sallallahu said If a mujtahid If a hakim gives an ijtihad A ruling and he's correct Then he gets two rewards If he makes a mistake he gets one reward Is that understood? So Imam al-Bani is saying Forget about the person Imam al-Bani is not talking about whether he's right or wrong He's saying with regards to others It is possible Because it is a mas'ala of ijtihad And we shall talk about this further It is possible that another alim might see otherwise Therefore, it is not binding to do, to force another person to take a stance. Therefore, that shows the mistake of these individuals who whenever a certain sheikh gives a ruling on something, they go and do tawaf around everyone else and say, what is your stance? Have you made tabdi'? To the extent that if a person, to the extent that one of them might be asked a question, and the question says, that a sister writes a question, says, I'm talking to a brother, who doesn't make tabdi' of a certain sheikh. And he says, if he doesn't do tabdi' of, some, of a certain sheikh, then find another brother. Find someone that is better. طيب. If you look into the books of the fuqaha in all four madhabs, you won't find that condition anywhere. So that is another mukhalafah, or the third mukhalafah, that these people fall into. And that is the waqi'. Yani you can't even make these things up. So these are... Things that take place in reality and Many of you have probably experienced it Many of you have probably experienced it So that is the third one Inshallah we're going to continue on after the salah Wallahu a'lam طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين We'll carry on from the, uh, from the point that we left off at uh, How many مخالفات or uh, uh, errors have we taken now That contradict the methodology of the Salaf al-Salih Three, the first. Al Wala al Baga. Naam. Building love and allegiance on, on a certain individual or individuals. Second. Tahazub al Salaf al Hizbi. Tahazub al Hizbi. Making a Salafiyya into a Hizb. Saying that anyone that is in agreement with me agrees with me is from my party and my Hizb. And anyone that contradicts what I believe and what I stand by, then they are a Hizbi. Anyone that doesn't come to my uh, attendance or gatherings or so on and so forth, then they are not from the Ahlul Sunnati, not from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And we said, I mentioned the statement of Sheikh Abdul Masan al-Abbad who says that that resembles the methodology of Ikhwan al-Ikhwan al-Muslimin. So it's embarrassing for a person claiming to be Salafi to be following the methodology of the Ikhwan al-Muslimin. Which, what's the point of refuting it every day if you're going to follow their methodology? The third mistake is... That if a certain sheikh make, ref, refutes a sheikh or declares or says that he is an innovator, then that sheikh, Hafidahullah, is rewarded. Either two rewards if he's right or one if he's mistaken. Like in the problem comes when people come to each other now and say, you have to also have a stance, as we shall see. You, what do you say? Sunni or Mubtadi. If you say Sunni, Alhamdulillah, you're left alone. Afwan. If you say Sun, he's a Sunni, then you are boycotted and you, every other bad name under the sun. And if you say that he's a Mubtadi, then Alhamdulillah, based on that one word, that's make or break. So Sunni, yani what, three letters? Sunni, if you say, then you're, it's the end of the world for you. You're Mubtadi. Just by saying these words. And say, if you say na'am, huwa mubtadi' Or even leave na'am and leave huwa out Mubtadi' mubtadi' Five or six letters, six letters If you say these five, six letters Then alhamdulillah you are upon The methodology of the Salaf al-Salih And that is 
يعني laughing at the methodology of the Salaf al-Salih. And that's one of the problems is that because of these hideous crimes against the Salafiyya, people start to write PDFs refuting one another. And these PDFs, they're like a novel. We went and he sat, when we went here, we sat here and then we came out. And then we've been known for the how many donkey years and we've been given da'wah. And then after giving da'wah, and, and mashallah, everyone knows that this and that. If you read it, you know, you'll laugh at it. Now for the unsuspecting young person, the person's going to think, Allah is sahih, mashallah, 26 pages of qala Allah wa qala Rasul. But in reality, is qala fulan wa qala fulan. So anyone that has, uh, anyone that has studied uh, the sharia of Islam will realize that this is closer to comedy than a knowledge-based refutation. Taib. The, the fourth mukhalafah is... And with regards to that, uh, go back to a statement by Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Abad as well. He was asked about this. And he said, that's not from the Hadi of the Salaf. He says that Sheikh Ibn Baz, his refutations were many. But he would never go to people and say, Taib, Ya Fawzan, agree with me or not? Ya Luhaydan, agree with me or not? For Ibn Baz, Ibn Uthaymin, I mean, you agree with me or not? He wouldn't do that. Qul kalimataka wamshi. Imam Albani used to say, Qul kalimataka wamshi. Say your word, refute, and then move on. Taib. And also Sheikh Saleh al-Suhaymi, he also has uh, a fatwa online that you can find on YouTube explaining this qa'ada in detail, saying that as it stands, then that is batil. And he put some restrictions or quyud on it. The fourth mistake, al-mukhalif al-rabi'ah, su'u tatbiqi wal-fahmi liqa'idat al-jarh al-mufassar muqaddam ala ta'deel. This qa'ida, misunderstanding and misapplying this qa'ida of the jarh that is mufassar, that is in detail, is given precedence to the praise. The qa'idah is sahih. The qa'idah in of itself is sahih. And ilm jarh wa ta'deel has been laid down by the scholars, the foundations and the principles and so on, siyanatan li sharia to preserve the sharia of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So that every time a mubtadi' comes, or any time a mubtadi' comes, the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah will say, La, this is a bid'ah, or this is a, uh, contradicts the madhab of the salaf. And previously it was also used for uh, uh, differentiating between weak ahadith, weak narrators, and strong narrators. So it was there to pray, preserve the sharia of Islam. And when we look at the angle of refuting Ahlul Bid'ah, again it is there to preserve the aqeed of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Because if we say we can't do jarh wa ta'deel and we can't say that this person is mubtadi' because of X, Y, Z and so on, then that means we're going to let the sharia be uh, played around with by every every individual. Lakin, the first part is what my intention is. Al Jarh al Mufassar. Al Jarh Mufassar, I don't know how it can be, how they can make a mistake on it because it's in many of the books of hadith. If you go back to Ikhtisar Ulum al Hadith, Tadrib al Rawi, Muqaddim al Salah, if you go to all of these books, they will explain to you that Jarh Mufassar is when an alim says that this person is a mubtadi' because of this. طيب. So the meaning behind this is, the Salaf say, the muhaddithun, they say, that reasoning that he's mentioning, we have to look at, mufassar, and it is explained. We have to look at it. So if I say now, you are a kadhab, or you've done this, 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 that is a jarh mufassar. I have clarified in detail my refutation against you. That's not the problem here. The problem is, that another alim can disagree with you on that. Another alim can disagree with you on that. And this among the Salaf was common knowledge. Like, and I don't know in the last 20 years how things have changed. Like, in, now it is as if, if a person does jarh mufassar, then it is wajib to take it as it is, without even looking into it. So I can say, or anyone can say anything, jarh mufassar, about an individual, and we have to take it. And if we don't take it, we're opposing the qawa'id of Ahlul Sunnah. How is that opposing the qawa'id of Ahlul Sunnah? Let's read some of the statements of the muhaddithun when it comes to, with regards to al-jarh mufassar. Imam Suyuti, he says, rahimahullah, in Tadhiqib Rawi, he says, وَلَا يُقْبَلُ الْجَرْحُ إِلَّا مُبَيَّنَ السَّبَبُ Al-jarh, a refutation, is not accepted unless the person explains the reason why he's refuting this individual. Tayyip. For example, he says that this person is weak in his hadith due to X, Y, Z. He explains it. 
لأنه يحصل بأمر واحد It has to be clarified because it happens with one, one word All you have to say is because of this, because of that طيب ولا يشق ذكره And it's not hard to mention And this is the part that محل شاهد لأن الناس Because the people يختلف أو مختلفون في أسباب الجرح لأن الناس Because the people They differ on that which be considered That can be considered a jarh طيب فيض فيطلق أحدهم الجرح بناء على ما اعتقده جرحا وليس بجرح في نفس الأمر So one of them may say that this person is X, Y, Z And they might believe that that is a clear cut refutation When in reality it is not something that harms The fact that this person is a just person The reliability of this person Although he believes it harms like in Suyud is saying, in reality, when you look into the matter, it is not. طيب. فلا بد من بيان سببه لينظر. It is binding that we he clarifies the reason لينظر so that we look into it. هل هو قادح أم لا? Is it something that disparages him? Is it something that takes him out of the fold of the Sunnah, or is it something that doesn't? Is it something that harms his reputation or is it something that doesn't? So the mahal shahid is the fact that Imam Suyut is saying what? We actually look at it. And also the kasala, the, the, the muhadithun, they would use a few lines of poetry for this. They would say, So they say that Ahmed ibn al Nasai, this individual called Ahmed ibn Salih, if he says that he's majruh due to XYZ, they wouldn't take the words of a Nasai due to certain reasons. Although the words of Nasai would be Jarhwa Mufassar, he would clarify them. Like in they wouldn't be they wouldn't be taken. Also, there's some word there's some uh, a benefit that we can take from uh Shawkani Rahimahullah Rahimahullah when he's talking about a mas'ala called Tahqiqul Manad. So he says Rahimahullah, Wahua and if he's Manad when he's talking about it. وهو تحقيق المناد really means like for example me and you agree on a certain thing لكن so I agree that a bid'ah is haram you agree bid'ah is haram you say this person has fallen into a bid'ah I say no he hasn't fallen into a bid'ah so we don't differ over the fact that bid'ah is haram what are we differing over? the fact that he hasn't actually fallen into it is that understood? so he says rahimahullah وهو أن يقع الاتفاق على علية وصف بالنص أو إجماع so we agree upon a illa, a reason, whether it's from the nas or an ijma. طيب, let's say our example here, a mubtadi'. We say a bid'ah. I agree and you agree. We both agree that every type of bid'ah needs to be refuted. صح? فَيَجْتَهِدُ فِي وُجُودِهَا فِي سُورَةِ النِّزَاعِ فَيَجْتَهِدُ So the mujtahid will come now and try his best to find this bid'ah in this individual that has been refuted. He will find this bid'ah that me and you agree on to see if this person that he applies on this person. Like how they would say the nabash, the one who goes into the graveyard and steals from the, uh, يعني, digs up and steals. Can he be called a sariq in the sharia? Because the sariq, his punishment is what? That his hand is cut off. So they say the one that goes into the graveyard and digs into the dead, uh, into the grave and takes out whatever is in there, property, for example, mal or whatever. Can he be called a sariq? So, Mahal shahid is where I know I agree and you agree that what? Sariqa is haram and that the sariq is hands to be cut off, sah? But the khilaf here he's talking about is the one that digs in the grave and takes out the property, can he really be called a person who is a sariq? You with me so far? طيب. So he says, Rahimahullah, وَسُمِّيَ تَحْقِيقَ الْمَنَاط and it's called تَحْقِيقُ الْمَنَاط meaning the Point, the pinnacle point of evidence in it is sent that because لأن المطانة مناطة هو الوصف علم أنه مناط هو الوصف it is the wasf or the trait that علم أنه مناط it is known that the reality of the matter is connected to it وبقي ولكن what is left is وبقي نظر في تحقيق وجوده في سورة المعينة في سورة المعينة لكن what is left is what finding the actual attribute in this person Again let's go to the Mubtadi' A certain sheikh Two Salafi sheikhs They agree on the fact that a bid'ah is haram And ahlul bid'ah are to be refuted 
عالم اي says that محمد is a مبتدع عالم بي says I agree with you بدعة is حرام and we need to refute لكن عالم لكن محمد is not a مبتدع due to x y z I know him he's a person upon sun and what you've said is not found in him he's not actually he doesn't have the traits of what you've just said what have they differed over this individual the tabiq the application of that and that has been known from throughout history anyone that reads any of the books of jahr wa ta'dil you will find that some of the salaf would say this person uh, this person da'ifun yahim or they would say suduq or they would say thiqa so this individual now ahmed ibn salih and nasai gives him like he's weak like in other say lahu thiqa he's thiqa he's accepted have they not differed in the jarh okay where's the mumayya hmm? saqid laqid kada wa kada wa kada where's all of these words they're, f- they're not there they're not found because that is not the methodology of ahlul ilm ahlul ilm understand these basics and it doesn't require me to just explain it's just so basic that is common knowledge i feel silly for even having to explain it to you and i'm sure you can all comprehend it okay so the mahal shahid is what the fact that Two alims can differ over a certain individual, whether he's a Sunni or he's a Mubtadi', whether he's made a mistake or not. Like it, it doesn't mean that they insult one another and they say that, لا, Anta, you are Mumayy, you are kada wa kada. And remember the example I said, Imam Al-Bani with Safar and Safar Salman? Did Al-Bani say to them, Ya Lajna Daima, Hadakumullah, Why haven't you made refutation? Why, where's your, you're, you're not quh, you're not strong on the madhab, manhaj. He didn't say that to him. Nor did they say to Albani, "Ya Antumumayy, Ya you just refute. You don't. You let everyone into the Sunnah of his, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so on." Why? Because the language of knowledge is sweet. Then lughatul ilm and adabul ilm, the etiquettes of knowledge, are sweet. Like when you go, when you see these people, you find how far and distant they are from knowledge. And there are many, but obviously we don't have time to go through it. Many statements similar to this. Al-Mukhalaf al-Khamisa, the fifth mistake that they make. أَخْذُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَالْمَسَاجِدِ كُلَّ مَا اخْتَلَفَ عَالِمَانِ سَلِفِيَانِ وَكُلَّ مَا غَدَّ عَالِمٌ عَلَى الْآخَرِ The fifth mistake is, and a foundation that they oppose is, getting clarifications, asking people to write clarifications and bayanat, asking people to write it down, and asking centers and mosques up and down the country to write their stance on a certain mas'ala. Every time a alim or two ulama, two scholars, have a dispute over something. Or every time one of them refutes another one. So what happens? They go to every person and they say, or go to the centers, and that center has to give a stance that they want. So they give them what? Mathala, what's your stance on this? The latest fitna that's going on. If they say something that is good, then alhamdulillah, they are upon the sunnah. If they say something that is not what they want to hear, they say, la, fulan has changed. He has changed from what we knew him to be upon. He has changed from what we knew him to be upon. When in reality, he hasn't changed. He just doesn't have to accept ideological terrorism by you uh, writing down uh, him writing down a bayan and then you come across funny things like pdfs being written uh, it's like a lineup uh, the the lineup of the salafi masajids in the uk it's laughable a lineup of the salafi masajids in the uk and when you look at the lineup it's a few masajids that agree upon one certain methodology and everyone else is a what is not upon the haq طيب. so that is in contradiction to the methodology of the Salaf al-Salih. Imam Malik, he says, Rahimahullah, أو كل ما جاءنا رجل أجدل من رجل تركنا ما جاء به جبريل على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم لجلد, لجدل هؤلاء. Is it the case that every time two people argue, أو كل ما جاءنا رجل, a man comes to us who's more argumentative than the previous one that came to us. Are we going to leave what Jibreel sent down to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم due to their arguments? due to their disputes. Time. There is no ending to that then. That is why I said to you last night that you will find a group of people that when they start the class, at the beginning of the class, there are about 200 people. Like in, because every six months, two scholars have a dispute over something. It's like you're renewing the contract every six months 
and then people fall down through the loopholes, as they say, or through the fishing net. And then you end up a year or two later with 20 people. And three years later, you end up with three. And even four years later, the masjid or the center might even get closed. That is from the ricochet effect of al-fitan. That is from the effects of al-fitan. To the extent that you all know Sheikh Saleh al sahaymi so, A man who, alhamdulillah, Allah Jalla wa'ala has blessed with knowledge. A alim who has taken from the great imams of our, of our era. Whose beard is grey. Whose beard has turned white because of calling to the sunnah or due to the number of years that he's been calling to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A teacher in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's masjid. So when he comes to the UK, you will find people say, La wallahi al-maslaha tu taqtadi Allah tadhab. The maslaha necessitates that you don't go. And the one that is saying the maslaha is this, a maslaha is that if you ask him how many books of usul al-fiqh, qawa'ad al-fiqh he has studied, in order to know what a maslaha is, you won't even find that he, he hasn't perfected or studied one book. That's like me talking about finding a cure for COVID. I've never, not a scientist, Allahu A'lam. So for me to say now, to talk about something that I don't understand, then that is incorrect. And that is a crime against Al Ilm and Al Salafiyya. So when you see people warning against that, where does that come from? If you ask them, what is his usul? And this is not just Sheikh Saleh al Sahimi. He's just the easiest example to mention right now because he's come to the UK. Is he a Salafi or non Salafi? <clears throat> uh, we're not going to say he's not Salafi. Don't give me philosophies. Ahu wa Salafiyun am Mubtadi'un. Kalamun Arabi. Salafi Mubtadi'. His mawaqif, his stances in recent years, as if we're talking about correspondence BBC. Listen. Forget about stance. Ahuwa Salafi and Mubtadi'. They won't give you opinion. The, the, yani, the Gawgha'iyun might say Mubtadi'. Like in those that have still got a bit of aql, won't say that. They will say, La, Wallahi, we're not happy with the stance that he has taken in the latest fitna. طيب. So that is what Al-Mukhalif Al-Khams. Al-Mukhalif Al-Sadisa, Bid'atu Imtihan Al-Nas, Bifulan wa Fulan. The Bid'a of testing people with this individual and this individual. طيب. Sheikh Abdul Muhsan al Abad Hafidahullah in talks about this, in talking about this, you know Sheikh Abdul Muhsan al Abad Hafidahullah. He says in his book, Rifqan al Sunnah, he says, وَمِنَ الْبِدْعِ الْمُنْكَرَ And from the, bid'a, from the evil bid'as that are around, مَا حَدَثَ فِي هَذَا الزَّمَانِ What has happened in this zaman, مِنْ إِمْتِحَانِ بَعْدِ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ بَعْدِ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ بَعْدًا بِأَشْخَاصٍ بأشخ... uh, What has happened? Or from the evil bid'ah that has come about now, what does he call it? Bid'ah. He says, from the evil bid'ahs that have come about, is that which has happened in this era now. In this era. Yeah? Where Ba'd Ahl Sunnah will test one another. Ahl Sunnah will test one another. Sawa'an kana al ba'ithu ala imtihani al jafa'u fi shakhsin yumtahanu bihi. Aw kana al ba'ithu alayhi al itira'u li shakhsin akhir. Whether the reason is so whether it is because it's to find out if you dislike this person or if you praise this person. Basically, it's testing you. وَإِذَا كَانَتِ نَتِيجَةُ الْإِمْتِحَانِ الْمُوَافَقَةِ لِمَا أَرَادَهُ الْمُمْتَحِنُ ضَفِّرَ Pay attention. If the answer that you give is in accordance with what he wants you to give, ضَفِّرَ بِالتَّحْرِيبِ وَالْمَدْحِ وَالثَّنَاءِ MashaAllah, you attain, يعني they will welcome you and praise you, and MashaAllah, they will say, أَنْتَ عَلَى السُنَّةِ وَقُحْ وَكَذَا وَكَذَا طيب. وَإِلَّا كَانَ حَظُّهُ التَّجْرِحُ وَالتَّبْدِيعُ وَالْهَجْرِ وَالتَّحْذِيرُ And if you don't say what they agree, what they agree, what they want you to say, if you don't say it, then the Sheikh says, رَحْمَهُ حَظُّهُ يَعْنِ يَوْ نَصِيب will be what? تَجْرِحْ you will be refuted. تَبْدِيعُ they will make تَبْدِيعُ of you. أَنْتَ مُبْتَدِعْ they will make هجر of you. They will boycott you. And they would warn against you. All of that because you said what? This person, maybe I don't see him to be a Sunni, just like many other scholars don't, um, I don't see him to be a Mubtadi', just like so many other scholars don't see him to be a Mubtadi' due to X, Y, Z. 
وهذه نقول عن شيخ الاسلام ابن تيميه في اولها تبديع في امتحان باشخاص الجفاء فيهم then he mentions some نقول or statements by شيخ الاسلام رحمه الله تعالى and i mentioned one of them earlier on where pers- where it's not permissible to choose a person pick a person and make الولاء والبراء based on him طيب in the books of the salaf you will find them saying if a person loves Imam Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, then he's a person of the Sunnah. If a person loves Imam Ahmed, he's a person of the Sunnah. If a person loves Fulan, he's a person of the Sunnah. طيب. So, but that was what, and also the same goes for Ibn Abi Du'ad and Ahlul Bid'ah, Maris, Yathumam, and so on. Ahlul Bid'ah as well. The Mu'tazila. If you praise them, then you're Mu'tazila. And if you love them, Afwan, if you refute them, then you're a person of the Sunnah. That is found in the books of Ahlul Sunnah. But that is because what is being tested here the love of this individual not the hukum of this individual and there's a difference alayse kadalik there's a difference between testing a person with the love of fulan and testing a person on the ruling of a fula, of fulan the ruling of jarh, the jarh that he does of another alim مثلا i'll give an example i can say anyone that if I say anyone that doesn't love Albani, we need to have a doubt against him. That's acceptable. Anyone that loves Sheikh Muhammad Aman Al Jami, we have to have a doubt against him. That doesn't love Imam Muhammad Aman Al Jami, and so on. We can have a, that's a reasonable statement to state because testing Ahlul Sunnah to see if they love him or not. However, there's a difference between that and saying Imam Al Bani said that this individual is a mubtadi' Therefore, I'm testing you with the ruling of Shaykh Al-Bani. If you agree with his ruling, fa'anta sunni, you're sunni, and you love Ahlul Sunnah. If you don't agree with the ruling of Al-Bani, then anta mubtadi', you are mubtadi', and takr- you hate tubqad Ahlul Sunnah. Do you understand the difference? Taib. Billahi alaykum, in the books of Aqeedah, which one is found? The first. The first is found. لكن الناس ما الشيخ عبد المحسن عباد حفظه الله السين that that is a بدعة and if you look into the refutations of Ibn Baz there are many لكن you won't find a single example where Ibn Baz refuted a certain person and he found Albani said Albani لازم تدافع عني you have to defend me لازم ترد على فلان you have to refute فلان if you don't refute him, Ya Albani, if you don't refute him, Iyaka thumma Iyaka, be careful. Be aware, if you don't refute him. That wasn't known. That wasn't known where? In the 90s. When these great Imams were born. When these great Imams were around. Billahi alaykum nabbi'uni. Tell me. Billahi alaykum. What is jadeed? The ones that are testing each other with the ruling of an individual or the jagh of an individual or the ones that are not doing it, the ones that are doing it have come with the new thing. So we say to them, Ya Ikhwani, Udu ila ahdikum al-qadim. Go back to how you were during the time of Imam Bani, Ibn Bas, Ibn Uthaymin, and so on and so forth. And you shall see some of the statements, inshallah, that I shall read. Tayyib. Al-Mukhalifa al-Sabi'ah, the seventh mistake is, Bid'atu isqadi ulama al-Sunnah. Li'annahum lam yuwafiqu ala tabdi'i fulan, aw li'annahum akhta'u. The bid'a of bringing down or removing or counseling the scholars of Ahl, the, uh, the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. I'm not talking about Ahlul Bid'ah. La karama lahum. There's no honor for Ahlul Bid'ah. Like Ahlul Sunnah is what I'm talking about. In the last 23 years, the amount of scholars or the number of scholars of Ahlul Sunnah that have been dropped because either they refuse to make tabdi' of a certain person or because they've made a mistake, which is Bashar, he can make a mistake. As long as his mistake is out of ijtihad, then as we shall see, he's excused. Rather, sometimes you find that a per- alim would repent from something, yet they would still refute him over that and say, La, he should have known. Wallahi wa Rabbul Kaaba, you hear that? La, he should have known. He's a Salafi, how can he make that mistake? As if Tawbah is closed and the sun has come out of the West. Taib. So with the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said with regards to the honor of the scholars and the Imams of Ahlul Sunnah, he says, يَحْمِلُ هَذَا الْعِلْمَ مِنْ كُلِّ خَلَفٍ عُدُولُهُ يَنْفُونَ عَنْهُ تَحْرِيفَ الْغَالِمُ وَانْتَحَالَ مُبْطِنُ وَتَعْوِ
there will cease to be there will always be from this ummah there will always be a part of my ummah that carry the knowledge and from that they are the most trustworthy of the just ones of every generation and they rem- remove the distortion of those that are distortion, distorting and they will expose the lies of the of the ones that are lies and they will expose the ones that are misinterpreting the Quran and the Sunnah so the scholars are what? Waratatul Anbiya Waratatul Anbiya Imam al-Dhahabi he says Rahimahullah ta'ala Walau anna كلما أخطأ إمام في اجتهاد في اجتهاده في أحاد المسائل خطأ مغفورا له قمنا عليه وبدعناه وهجرناه لما سلم معنا لا ابن نصر ولا ابن مندى ولا من هو أكبر منهما. If it was the case that every time a alim makes a mistake in his اجتهاد in 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 a single or individual مسألة a mistake that he could be forgiven for if we were to make تبديع of him and make هجر of him. Then no one would be with us. Not even Manda and Ibn Masa. We wouldn't have anyone left. Why? Because they are Bashar and they make mistakes and no one is perfect. Just like the people that I'm mentioning now who's, who were mentioning their seventh mistake, if we wanted to make tabdi' of them, we could have done it on the very first one. If we wanted to make hajr of them, we could have done them on the very first one. Or the second one. Or the third one that Sheikh Abdul Mahsan Abad says it is from the methodology of Ikhwan Muslimin. Tayyip. So. With regards to this, it is not permissible to drop, eliminate, and cancel the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah because they don't agree with you. And that is from the methodology of the Ikhwan Muslimin and the Hizbiyun in general. The Hizbiyun in general. That is their methodology. Why? Because when you get rid of these great Imams and you say, La, don't take knowledge from them. When you don't take knowledge from them, don't take knowledge from them. Who's left? You're going to go to the Jahal. So you warn against these great imams, who are you going to leave the people with? Who are the people going to go to? Allah says, فَسَأَلُوا هَلَا ذِكْرِ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Who are they going to go to? بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ They're not going to have anyone to go to. لكن, if the masail were left with أهل العلم, then alhamdulillah, things would have been sorted out. But when ignorant people, who are ignorant, who don't have any knowledge whatsoever, who haven't studied properly, when they delve into matters that are kibar or major issues, then they will get confused. It's like telling a two-year-old to go into the ocean. He's going to drown in how many seconds? Immediately. And then he's going to have to get everyone to, to try to save him. طيب. المخالفة الثامنة طيب. Just before that, to the extent that sometimes you get every alim that you mention لا فيه شيء. What about this fulan? La he he shay. What about this fulan? La he didn't take a good stance ten years ago. What about this person? La in the latest fitna he wasn't. He didn't show that he was a man. And then you again that left two three mashayikh. If that two three mashayikh. If that. Also, you will find that yesterday this person was alim, hafid, imam, hujja, kada wa kada wa kada. Every good name, mashallah, in the books of Jaghwa Tadil. Today's kannahu lam yakun. Today it's as if he's not even existent. Yeah, yesterday you were saying he's got knowledge. Today you're saying he's not got knowledge. And that is, you can't do nasq of akhbar. You can't do nasq of akhbar. So that is not acceptable. Al-Mukhalifa al-Thamina, the eighth mistake. Adam untabtihim li mas'alat al-hajr. The fact that they can't understand and they don't implement the mas'ala of al-hajr correctly. Because they built their asal on a certain individual, so anything that agree, anyone that agrees with that certain individual, then alhamdulillah he is from them, and anyone that doesn't, then he is not. Then he is not. I'm going to read to you a statement that they said. They asked Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan, Hafidhullah. They said to him, Hafidhullah, ما حكم الذين يلزمون الناس بالتبديع بعد الدعاء وبناء الولاء والبراء على ذلك وهجر من لم يبدع. طيب. The Sheikh says, ma nasa. What is the ruling of those that are forcing the people be tabdi'i ba'di du'at? That are forcing people, what is the ruling of those people that force people to make tabdi'i? Say that this person is a, is a mubtadi'i. Wa al-wala and to build, wa uh, bina'u al-wala and to build wala wal bara love and indigence based on that. And to boycott the one that doesn't make tabdi'i. What does he say? You all know Sheikh Saleh Fawzan, sah? So you know he's not Ahad al-Shabaab. He's not one of the people from around the corner. Not Ustad Fawzan. He says, حفظه الله فأجاب بقوله 
لا تلتزم بهذا Don't hold on to that Don't stick to that ولا تطعهم في هذا أنت not do not obey them in that قل say أنا بريء من هذا معافاني الله سبحانه وتعالى من هذا Allah has saved me from it and cured me from that There's not, I, have, I don't have that disease I am free from it ولا أدخل فيه and I do not go into this مسائل these into these مسائل ولا أعرف عنه شيء and I don't know nothing about him what does Sheikh Fawzan say to those people what did he advise them with say I am free from it do not obey them in that do not, I say I do not go into it and what I don't even know nothing about him when you hear words like this now I realize why those people didn't want to go to Sheikh Salah Fawzan because that's probably what he would have said and on so many occasions he would be asked about these Masail and he would say how will I be talabat al-ilm aslam those, they're not even طلاب العلم anyway أصلاً. Those people that are busy themselves with that طيب. So have I mentioned the words of Ustad Fulan that teaches in Masjid Nawawi Or have I mentioned the words of Sheikh Salah Al-Fawzan طيب. So you say Ya Akhi Sheikh Fawzan told me not to get into these fitan What have you got against me? بدع Sheikh Salah Al-Fawzan إن كان فيك رجولة طيب The last مسألة or the last مخالفة is Adam Tafriqihim Bain al Masail al Ishtihadiya and Leti Yasuku fi and Khilafu Bain Al Sunati Wal Jama'a wa Leti La Yasuku Mathal al Jakhu Tadir wa Tabdir wa Tahaj wa Adam Muraati Musalih al Mufasid wal Ma'alat. The the ninth and it's not the last, like in the ninth one that they were going to stop with, is the fact that they do not differentiate between Masail Ishtihadiya that can accept the reasonable difference of opinion among Ahl Sunnah. And those masail that cannot take reasonable difference of Ahlul Sunnah. When there's a khilaf, not every khilaf is on the same level. And when there's a khilaf, not every khilaf is acceptable. مثلا, if Ash'ari comes to us and says, Yaqi, Allah doesn't descend to the last heaven of every night. You can't turn around and say, Wallah, ikhtalaf al-ulama. You say that, sah, khalas. Laka hadha, wali hadha. I have this and you have that. Or someone comes to you and says, La, we have to rebel against the hukam. You can't say, well, you know, you've got a few ulama that are on your opinion. Alhamdulillah, I've got a few ulama. Let's put it to bed. La, that's impermissible. Like, and then there is a type of ijtihad or khilaf that accepts differing between Ahlul Sunnah. And that has always been known. But then when the fitness started about 23 something years ago, all of these were washed away and we were given new rules and regulations. Taib. So we have to avoid these mistakes. And if someone asks you, say, I don't want to take knowledge from a person who falls into these mistakes. Why? Because the Salaf will say, This religion, this knowledge is your religion. So be careful who you're taking your religion from. And how many people have gone to those sorts of gatherings and it said, and then when he reads the matter, he says, Yeah, Fulan. Fulan says this, and he says this, and Fulan says that. And then they spend years on Usul al Thalath and they haven't even understood the Maqsud al Kitab. It happens all the time. Remember the story I said to you last night that individual that said they wasted, Fulan wasted 10 years of my life? So going to these individuals, you're going to be wasting your time. If only, Ya Allah, Ya late, if only they were teaching you knowledge. Lacking your knowledge, you can't play Russian roulette with your religion. طيب last مسألة just or the second to last مسألة someone might say يا أخي why are you being harsh in mentioning these mistakes there's a lot of good in in a lot of these people maybe they've been calling to this da'wah for the last 60 years and although it's new for 20 something years like maybe they've been calling for the last 60 years look at how many massages they've got look how many mashallah mashallah kada wa kada wa kada the answer to this is that is what is known as manhaj al-muwazanat Where the hizbiyun, they say every time you refute someone or you criticize someone You have to mention his good traits And the scholars, they refute that It was said to Ibn Baz, is it wajib to do so whenever you're refuting someone to mention his good points Because ma'ajib, it's not wajib When they said to Sheikh Fawzan, Hafidhullah, when they asked him about that He said, Aslan, if you praise him, you've called to him So the fact that I've mentioned these criticisms And they are knowledge-based criticisms and I haven't come with any ta'leef min indi. I came with the statements of Ibn Taymiyyah, al-Dhahabi, al-Fulan, al-Sheikh Fawzan, al-Abad, and so on. Then we realize that what? We don't have to mention these good points because they're good points because that is managing muwazanat. <laughs> Why were the scholars fighting the Hizbiyun for 23 years 
or 25 years if we were going to now fall into muwazanat. طيب. المطلب الثالث, the last one is the evil traits or the evil effects of what has happened. Number one, تضعيف دعوة السلفية وتشويها. The fact that the da'wah salafi has become weak, whether we like it or not. Although some people will help uh, try to make you think that it's, mashallah, everything's hunky dory. Lakin, number one, the misinterpretation and the misunderstanding of da'wah salafiya, it has weakened the da'wah salafiya. Also, taqwiyya to shamli ahl bid'ah. Also, ahl bid'ah, mashallah, they're loving it now. Ahl sunnah are busy with themselves, the salafis are busy with themselves. They're relaxing. When was the last time you heard ahl bid'ah being refuted? In these sorts of dogas, people are like, these extremists, what are they doing? Why? Because refuting Ahlul Bid'ah has become a Satirul Awwaleen. When we done the Ikhwan Muslimin Daga last year, people were like, Ahle, Ikhwan Muslimin, okay, we talking about Ikhwan Muslimin? The Salafis were saying that. When you bring a book of Ahlul Sunnah, they say, why are you teaching that book? So refutations among Ahlul Sunnah, among the Salafis, has become like a thing of the past. And it's become a taboo subject. Because of that, Ahlul Bid'a are murih, mashallah, they're relaxing. Look, look at those wild Salafis at it all the time. We're relaxing. Taib. So that has given strength to them. Also, taqad'u wa bayna Ahlul Sunnah. Ahlul Sunnah refuting one another, turning their backs to one another, boycotting one another. That's not from the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah to Wal Jama'ah. Lakin we see that today. We see that today to the extent that brothers are not allowed to see their wives. To the extent that brothers are told that their, wife are told, their wives are told that like, he doesn't make tabdi'a of fulan and fulan and fulan. And brothers wouldn't be allowed to see their wives for so many years. Hmm? To the extent that two people accepted Islam, two brothers accepted Islam, and they met those people, and they started to fight one another or, or argue over one another, saying, La, antum tada, antum tada, antum tada. And then their kufag parents would say, La, wallahi, Islam has harmed these kids. These, these, my, our sons were nice before. They used to have a good relationship. But when they accepted Islam, this has happened. Type. Also, the deficiency of knowledge being spread among the Salafis. And that is wadih, that is so clear. The fact that the lack of knowledge that is being spread among Ahlul Sunnah, or the deficiency in that, in that knowledge. And I don't mean to do a beautiful i'lan and poster saying, مثلا كتاب التوحيد. Like the problem is not the fact that on the poster, they say it's kitab to hadith, that's good. Lakin, when you read the verse and the hadith, if only these verses were being taught, like in Fulan said this and Fulan said that, we have to be strong upon the Sunnah, we have to. Things that have no mahal there. When in reality they're talking about Ahlul Sunnah. Tadir awqati shabab, wasting the time of the shabab. Wasting time of the shabab. Definitely wasting the time of the shabab. Because when a young person comes to you, he wants knowledge. Give him that knowledge. Don't say to him, he said and he said. Remember, what was the statement? Don't give me a fish. What? Teach me how to fish. Like in these people, they don't want you to learn how to fish, nor will they give you proper fish. They'll give you a poisoned fish. طيب. Number six, taga'us. Taga'us. Giving leadership to those that are not worthy of being given leadership. Leadership. Also, from the effects, is taqal istiqama. A lot of people leaving off istiqama to the extent that some of them became, some people became, Kufago, back, they apostated from the religion of Islam because it kept on getting said to them, what's your stance on this? What's your stance on that? And this was maybe about 15, 16 years ago. And the last one is that it creates an audacity or boldness in the shabab towards the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah. To the students, there's a jug'ah, boldness and audacity among some of the students when it comes to the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah to al-jama'ah. Taib. That is with regards to the first mas'ala, which is the ghulwi. And being extreme. The next mabhath is tamir, and inshallah, I'm going to summarize it in the next 10 15 minutes. Taib. Like, and be patient. We don't have these gatherings all the time, inshallah. So be patient somewhat. The, 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 the tamir is the next one. And watering down, or the dangers of watering down the religion and the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Tamir, in summary, means to be lenient, falsely lenient, and to put up with. Uh, uh, giving up some of the methodology of the Salaf al-Salih in order to please the people, in order to bring the people together, in order to in order for fame and so on and so forth. طيب. Al-Madlab al-Thani is the mukhalafat, the mistakes that these people have. Number one, al-Khat al-Makhal, al-Mukhalafat al-Ul, al-Qawlu ba'adam al-Radda ala ahl bid'ah, wa anna radda yusabbibu al-Furqa. 
They say that it is not permissible and we shouldn't refute Ahlul Bid'ah today, this day and age. And refutations, they cause division among the Ummah. That contradicts a foundation from the foundations of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, which is to refute the person that opposes the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is found in the Quran. Did Allah Jalla wa'ala not say, وَقَدْ نَزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الْكِتَابِ أَنْ إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ يُكْفَرُ بِهَا وَيُسْتُحْسَرُ بِهَا فَلَا تَقْعُدُوا مَعَهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُوضُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِهِ إِنَّكُمْ إِذَا مِثْلُهُمْ Did Allah Jalla wa'ala not say, if you hear people mocking the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being disbelieved in, then don't sit with them. Don't sit with them until they indulge in something else. Otherwise, you will be like them. So that is a refutation that we find in the, in, in, in the Quran. Also, the religion is based upon advice Like if you say that We're not going to refute them Because refutations bring uh, Differing and division Division among who? Sahih It divides Ahlul Haq The people upon the Haq And Ahlul Batil And that is what is needed And that is what is needed طيب. And Ahlul Sunnah Rahimahumullah The Salaf Salih They would praise a person Who was shadid ala Ahlul Bid'ah That was actually a praiseworthy trait he was stern against Ahlul Bid'ah. Some of them, like Imam Shafi, would say Ahlul Bid'ah or the Ahlul Kalam. If it was up to me, they should be lashed with shoes, sandals, and trees, and so on, and made to do tawaf around the streets as an embarrassment and belittlement to, to them. So that is a foundation that those people have uh, uh, contradicted from the Usul of Ahlul Sunnah. And if it was the case that Imam Ahmed and so on, if everyone was to say that, then khalas. Today, all of you would be saying Al-Qur'an al-Makhluq. Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, if he didn't refute the Mu'tazila, and if Shaykh al-Islam, rahmatullahi alayhi, Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, rahmatullahi alayhi, and Ibn Baz, Ibn Uthaymin, and Fawzan, and Albani, and so on, if they didn't refute the Batil, Allah A'lam what would be of us. Lakin Allah Jalla wa'ala chose them to preserve their religion. Preserve the religion of Al-Islam. طيب. The second مخالفة is تعظيم أهل البدع والتفاع عنهم وتطبيقهم لقاعدة الإخوان التعاون فيما اتفقنا عليه ويعذر بعضنا بعضا فيما اختلفنا فيه. They glorify the people of Ahl al They honor them, praise them, and they defend them. And they apply the qawaid of the ikhwan muslimin. For example, they say, whatever we agree upon, ya jama'ah, khalas, alhamdulillah. You say, la ilaha illallah, I say, la ilaha illallah, khalas, alhamdulillah. You believe Prophet Muhammad was the last prophet, I believe Prophet Muhammad was the last prophet, khalas. Anything covered than that, if we disagree upon the names and attributes and khuruj, ya akhi, put these masail to one side. And that causes what? Hadmul al-Din, it destroys the religion. It destroys the methodology of the salaf al-salih. طيب. Also, we heard, مثلا, you heard a lot of these narrations with regards to Ahl al-Bid'a in the last lecture, therefore I won't go through all of them. لكن فذيل المعيار رحمه الله says, من عظم صاحب بدعة whoever glorifies and praises a person of bid'a فقد أعان على هدم الإسلام. He has helped in destroying al-Islam. طيب. The third مخالفة is جلوسهم مع أهل البدع والمشاركة في الدعوة ومشاركة ومشاركتهم في الدعوة. The fact that these people, they will sit with the people of Ahlul Bid'ah. They will share platforms with them. And they will, in reality, they're calling to them. I remember when it was said to Awza'i that Hada you read and you jealous Ahlul Sunnah wa Ahlul Bid'ah. It was said to him, a man wants to sit with Ahlul Bid'ah and Ahlul Sunnah. He said, Hada you read and you saw with Bainul Haqqa wal Batil. He wants to bring the truth and Batil to the, uh, in one table, in one room. And Ahlul Sunnah, they would all refute those people who actually sat with them. Those people who sat with Ahlul Bid'ah. And this is found in the Quran and in the Sunnah. Did the Prophet Sallallahu not say, مثل الجليس الصالح والجليس الصو كمثل صاحب المسك? Did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi not say that the person that, the good friend and the bad friend is like the person that is the blacksmith and the perfume seller? طيب. Just like you would not sit with a perfume seller. طيب. Why are you going to sit with Ahlul Bid'ah? Who's worse? The one, Afwan, just like you wouldn't sit with the blacksmith. Who's worse? The, who's worse, the blacksmith or Ahlul Bid'ah? The blacksmith will get your clothes dirty. Like, and they will get your religion dirty. 
They will get your heart dirty. So they're more worthy of staying away from. Also, Ibn Mas'ud said, when it was meant to him about Al Bid'a, we mentioned, he said, He flees, he runs with his heart and his religion. He doesn't see with anyone from Ahlul Bid'a. Uh, it, was, it was said to Ibn Sayyid uh, like, oh, A few people came to him And he said uh, It was said about him to, when, when they said to him Why don't you Allow them to read the verse or two He said to, and yaqra'a, Those two ayatan that they, And then I feared That they would distort it And misinterpret it that, fi qalbi. I feared This is Ibn Sayyid Tabi'in Students of Abu Hurair and so on he would say, I feared that they would misinterpret a verse and then and then it would stay, remain in my heart, and I wouldn't be able to able to get it out. So these are the يعني, narrations condemning sitting with Ahlul Bid'a. And I'll give you two examples. Imran bin Hittan and a qissa that happened with Imam al Qudni. Iman bin Hittan, as you all know, he was a person of khayr upon goodness, and then he married a woman that was from the Khawarij. They said to him, Ya akhi, marry a Sunniya. He said, La, I'm going to change this Khawarijiya to a Sunniya. Anyway, what happened happened. He ended up being a Khawarij. He took her madhab, her methodology. Once he took her methodology, he started to praise the killer of Ali radiallahu anhu. Billahi alayk, talk about a 360 degrees turn. From being from those that are praised. To end, to end up praising the one that Ya dagbatan min ya dagbatan min taqiyin ma urida biha illa wajhullah Oh, kama qal Yani he's saying the striking of Ali The person that done it Al-Jamahullah Wanted <laughs> Yani wanted The face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yani he done it out of ikhlas He killed Ali out of ikhlas Alayhi min Allahi Ma yastahiq Tayyip So having said that are you gonna now say, you know what, I'm gonna sit with Ahlul Bid'a, you know they're good people anyway. La, talama, the fact if you know they're Ahlul Bid'a, then why go to them? Would you hang around with a few thieves? No, because you're scared they're gonna steal your phone. So why hang around with people that are Ahlul Bid'a, they're gonna steal your religion? Also, on top of that, the dangers of Mashaykh and Du'at sitting with Ahlul Bid'a is we, the reality is we've got this culture where where teachers are looked at or mashaykh are looked at as role models. That's a reality. So imagine if your teachers now go and sit with Ahlul Bid'a. Your teachers now go and sit with Ahlul Bid'a. You're going to say, Khalas, Ustad Fulan, he sits with them. There's no harm in that. Ustad Fulan knows the haqq, he knows the Salafi methodology, but he's sitting with them. If it wasn't allowed, to, if we weren't allowed to sit with them, he would not have done it. And that is batil. That is batil. So that is from the effects. Another story is Imam al Tagh Qudni was with Abu Dhar al Harawi, one of the narrators al Bukhari. And they saw Abu Bakr al Baqalani, who was from the Asha'ira. Imam al Tagh Qudni, he said, oh, when Baqalani gave them salam, Abu Dhar asked who he is. And he gave him salam in a good way. Tagh Qudni gave him salam in a good way. Abu Dhar said to him, Who is that? And then he says, You don't know who that is. That's Imam Baqalani and so on. Abu Bakr al and so on. Abu Dhar, he went to seek knowledge with him. Given the fact that he was Ash'ari, what is he going to learn from him? The Aqidah of the Ash'ari. He learned the Aqidah of the Ash'ari. And it is said that the Ash'ari, the Aqidah of the Ash'ari, he entered into Maghrib, into Spain and, and, and Morocco and so on, due to Abu Dhar al-Hagawi, through Abu Dhar al-Hagawi. Shuf. Just by praising one person, it made a Tilmid, a student, take knowledge from him. Also, you can't say there's a Shubha. They say, La, we're going to take the Haqq and we're going to leave the Batil. We're going to take what he's saying that is truth and we're going to leave the batil. Aslan, you're, you're a student, sah. How do you know what is batil or not? Yani, imagine you now sitting here and say, I've got a pen. Everything that Ustad Saeed says that is wrong, I'm going to put it on the left-hand side. Everything that he says that is right, I'm going to put it on the right-hand side. If you're doing this and you're an imam of Jarrah wa Ta'adil, you don't even need to attend in the first place. Like in the fact that that is how you'll be deceived. And that's from Talbis Iblis, the deception of Iblis. Take the haqq and leave them. And they will say even Iblis spoke the truth. Um, and there's a difference between mudarat and mudahana. Mudarat is when you are kind and gentle to a person and you're explaining the haqq to them so that they can take the haqq. There's no harm in that. Rifq makanu fi shay illa zana. Gentleness is not put into something except 
that it beautifies it. Lakin mudahana is what? When you leave part of your religion, you forfeit part of your methodology so that you can pull in the numbers. And that is blameworthy. So the Salaf would say that mudarat is mustahab, is madlub. Why? Because you need to be gentle to people and advise people and so on. Lakin mudahana is this praiseworthy. It is not something that is, that should be. That should be done. The fifth mistake that those people have is They dislike those scholars of Ahlu Sunnah who are known for refuting Ahlu Bid'ah. They dislike them and they mention them in, with bad words. They even say, Why are you teaching their books? Why are you teaching their books? طيب. Whilst at the same time, so why are they hating them? Because they refute. Whilst at the same time loving those scholars of Ahlul Sunnah that are not known for refuting Ahlul Bid'ah. It's good that they love these scholars. But why is it that the one that refutes Ahlul Bid'ah, you dislike him and you warn against him, and the one that doesn't is not known for refuting Ahlul Bid'ah out and out, you love him and you say they're role models to you and so on and so forth. With regards to that, or the next mukhalafa, the next mukhalafa is istidlaluhum bil mutashabih wa tawqu al wadihat ka in yaqulu nura'i al hikmata wa ahadith al ikhuwa akhuwa fatarahum yatalatafuna fatarahum yatalatafuna ma'ahum al bid'ah fi hin tarahum mutashaddidin ma'ahum sunnah. You will find that they use evidences as things. There are not evidences. They will leave things that are clear cut for things that have ambiguity surrounding them. طيب. Things that are clear cut. يعني stay away from innovations. وكل بدعة ضلالة. Stay away from أهل البدعة. بالله عليك. Does that need rocket science? No. That's clear cut. لكن to say that the hikma necessitates that we sit with them. That means when you say the hikmah necessitates that we sit with them, all of you, all of the shabab of Ahlul Sunnah are going to go and sit with them as well. Who's going to bring those shabab back? For argument's sake, let's say even you've let's say you've got enough knowledge to defend their bid'ah, to stay, yani, stay away from their bid'ah. These shabab that you're taking with you, they don't have that. They don't have that criterion that you believe you have. Therefore, they'll be misguided. So for example, now for me to say to you, you know what? Many years ago, Ibn Baz sat in a certain uh, seminar. Look, there's the picture. Google it in. Are we going to leave these athar, these narrations from the Salaf of Salih and the aqeed of the Salaf of Salih with regards to the Mubtadi' for two or three or four photographs? يعني, you know it's impermissible to take knowledge from someone that you don't know. Imagine Google, يعني, googling a picture. To say we're taking knowledge from that. So, we don't know what was surrounding that alim, that imam that was sitting there. We don't know what he was there for. We don't know the circumstances surrounding that. And therefore, khalas, we leave that and we go to that which is clear, which is julus ma'ahl bid'ah, leaving off, sitting with ahl bid'ah. Also, to say that hikmah necessitates we don't refute them. طيب. Until when, billahi alaykum, until when are we going to use al hikmah to say, uh, the hikmah means that we don't refute them. If they were to stop spreading their batil, you can kind of understand. But they're spreading their batil. They're not saying the hikmah is not that we don't spread our batil. Ahlul Bid'ah will never say the wisdom is that we don't spread our batil now. In most cases, they won't. You see them now. How many mubtadi's have you seen uh, saying, La, we're not going to. How many khawarij and ikhwan muslim have said, Yeah, we're not going to make tab. Say that we're not going to say revolt now because it's not from the hikmah. We're going to say revolt in 10 years. How many of you have heard that? None. Because they say let's revolt now. So why is it if they're not using if they're not using hikmah to spread their battle and they're always spreading their battle, why do you have to govern Ahlul Sunnah and say like you have to have hikmah? Shh, don't talk. And see as a taboo, as a taboo topic. Taib. So that is not it is not permissible to do. That is ghish the shabab. That is cheating the shabab. And that is not permissible. And a person, the Prophet said, Man ghashana, minna. The one that cheats us, he is not from us. طيب. Also, with regards to Ahlul Bid'ah, it's all fair and well, fair and well so using 
وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا and don't oppress one another and so on and so forth to say that and then when it comes to أهل السنة who are refuting أهل البدع to say والله you're extremist you're this you're that طيب where's all of those أحاديث of أهل السنة then طيب the next one or the sixth one is وصفهم أو أنهم يصفون أهل السنة بالغلات وأنهم متشددون لأنهم يقدون على أباطيل أهل البدع they will say that أهل السنة are غلات they are extremists طيب يا جماعة why are they extremists because they're talking about fulan and they're saying don't sit with this person and they're saying that this person has contradicted x y z from the foundations of Ahlul Sunnah طيب what he's done is what, in accordance with the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah refuting ikhwan muslimin where's the where's the jareem in that where's the crime in that as long as you refute them with knowledge and you use their books to refute them you don't lie against them you don't lie against them lakin you tell the truth with justice but you expose them what's wrong with that that is something that is praiseworthy like in to say they are extremists when ahlu bid'ah see that ahlu bid'ah are going to be like look the salafis even the salafis know that salafis are extremists even salafis know that salafis are extremists billahi alaykum what's going to be left after that طيب the last point is asbab tamyi' the reasons for tamyi' First of all, first and foremost, أَرَادُ الْخُرُوجَ مِنَ الْغُلُوِ فَوَقَعُوا فِي عَكْسِهِ Some of the reasons why they might fall into tamyi' and watering down their methodology is because maybe they've been harmed by those people who are, who are extreme, who we talked about in the first part of the lecture. Or they say, we don't want to be extreme. طيب, it's true, you shouldn't be extreme. But don't go 360 degrees to the other, to, to the other side. Another one is عَدَمُ الْمَعْرِفَةِ بِمَنْهَجِ السَّلَفِ عَدَمُ الْمَعْرِفَةِ الْمَنْهَجِ السَّلَفِ not knowing the true methodology of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Not knowing the proper methodology of Ahlul Sunnah and how they deal with, deal with situations. Number three, Hubbu Tajmi' Loving to gather the people. There's Ijtima' and there's Tajmi' Tajmi' is when you bring everyone and say, listen, guys, don't worry about your aqidah. Don't worry about what you believe. We need numbers here. We need numbers. Don't worry. خلاص, you believe what you want to believe. But the most important thing is numbers. لكن as for الاجتماع الاجتماع على الحق coming together upon the حق and the الشريعة calls for اجتماع على الحق لا تجميع it doesn't call upon every single person to come together for the sake of coming together طيب also one of the reasons is ignorance wanting to please the people wanting to please the people طيب the المطلب الثالث الأثار السلبية the uh, the negative Effects of this watering down methodology of the watering down of the methodology of the Salaf is Tatlilu Shabab, misguiding the Shabab because it is Ghish, cheating. And taking them to the people of Ahlul Bid'ah. Number also, Nashru Madahib Ahlul Bid'ah. Spreading the methodology of Ahlul Bid'ah, spreading their beliefs. By and calling to them by praising them. Also, number three, a lot of the Shabab are not able to distinguish the difference between the one that is a Salafi upon the Aqeed of the Salaf Salih and the one that is not a Salafi upon the Aqeed of the Salaf Salih. And wallah, it's not your fault. You've been let down by those that were calling to the Haq, those that were meant to call to the Haq. So it's not your fault. Like now that you know that issue, you need to obviously do something about it. طيب نمبر 4 صار كثير من اهل السنه لا يتكلمون في اهل البدع لظنهم ان هذا يفرق الامه even a lot of اهل السنه that know the correct methodology they say like we're not going to talk about اهل البدع because it takes the ummah away it takes the ummah away it causes division and so on and so forth and we're meant to be united so you hear that amongst the salafis يعني اهل البدع is understandable that they'll say that لكن اهل السنه saying that it is wrong نمبر 5 قله قله تدريس المنهج السلفي the lack of teaching the methodology of the Salaf of Salih. The lack of teaching the methodology of the Salaf of Salih. So you will find a lot of them either busying themselves with general admonitions or busying themselves with fiqh. Fiqh is important, la shak, it's important that we have to have a fiqh of din, understanding. Lakin, not at the expense of the aqeed of the Salaf of Salih. Not at the expense of the aqeed of the Salaf of Salih. Taib. I'm going to read to you four advices, three advices, sorry. Just so that you know, and I did promise you last night, I said go to these mashayikh, 
And if I say anything other than them, we did. I said we're going to cancel the what? The Friday class. Type. We've already had statements from Imam Al Bani, rahimahullah. Let's take a statement from Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan, hafizahullah. Now we've had uh, one from Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan, so we'll take one from Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Abad, hafizahullah. He says, hafizahullah. ولا شك أن الواجب على أهل السنة في كل زمان ومكان and is يعني واجب upon every there's no doubt that it is compulsory upon every upon أهل السنة in every time in every place التآلف وتراحم فيما بينهم that they have mercy upon one another and that they come together والتعاون على البر والتقوى and to work together upon piety and تقوى وإنما ما يؤسف له في هذا الزمان and from the things that are sad in this زمان ما حصل من بعد أهل السنة من وحشة واختلاف it is sad to see that a lot of times in Ahlul, between Ahlul Sunnah there's been differing and there's been uh, hostility between them. مِمَّا تَرَتَّبَ عَلَيْهِ إِنْشِغَالُ بَعْضِهِمْ بِبَعْضٍ تَجْرِيحًا وَالتَّحَذِيرًا وَهَجْرًا which has caused many of them to busy themselves with boycotting, with refuting one another and warning against one another. وَكَانَ الْوَاجِبُ لَكِنْ What was wajib upon them? أَنْ تَكُونَ جُهُودُهُمْ That their juhud and their efforts جَمِيعًا مُوَجَّهَةً إِلَى غَيْرِهِمْ مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ وَأَهْلِ الْبِدَعِ الْمُنَاوِئِينَ لِأَهْلِ السُنَّةِ Like what was wajib is what? That they face, they, face, they come together and they face they put their efforts into refuting the kuffar and refuting Ahlul Bid'ah, those who hate Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. وَأَنْ يَكُونُوا فِي مَا بَيْنَهُمْ مُتَآلِفِينَ مُتَرَاحِمِينَ يُذَكِّرُ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا بِرِفْقٍ وَلِينَ And they, would, they should have been brothers loving one another, having mercy upon one another, reminding each other of rifq and mercy, to be gentle to one another. طيب. These are the words of Ahl Sunnah, the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. How can we leave this and say, لا, you have to take a stance, you have to take a stance. It's impossible. Also, how can we leave these statements of the Salaf al Salih and say, La Ahl Bid'ah, Wallahi Kwaisin Hadi Layam? They're nice these days. You know, they're okay. <laughs> like, we can't. That's the reality. We can't. So, we have to stick to the methodology of the Salaf al Salih. Ikhwani, Afdalul Karamati al Istiqama. The best of the Karama of honor is al Istiqama that Allah gives you steadfastness. Don't be like the windmill, 360 this way, 180 that way, and then back about 190 that way. لا. كن سلفيا على الجادة. Be a Salafi upon the correct methodology of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And صدقوني, learn, learn, seek knowledge. Wallahi, if you seek knowledge, you'll be able to, and Allah gives you tawfiq, you'll be able to differentiate between the haqq and the batil. That's why throughout these 20 years, those people that were well, 23 years, those people that were blessed with knowledge, you won't find them yet going from one side to another. It's always the, the ones that are juhal, the ones that have no knowledge and no understanding of the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's always them. So one day you're imam, to them you're imam, one day you're mubtadi'. And it might be that when you repent, you might come back to being a mubtadi'. It's like as if it's a shirt that you put on outside and you put, uh, take off outside when you get inside. Like in the only way that you can be saved from these fitting is if you carry on seeking knowledge. Under people that are trustworthy, that are upon the methodology of the Quran, the Sunnah, with the understanding of the Salaf al Salih. Not those people that go to extremes, into one extreme, because they'll take you off the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah. And you have to be with them every other way. There's no turning back. It's like, you know, um, you know those, uh, the triads and the mafia. Once you join, there's no going back. You're, and you're scarred for life. That's how that methodology is. So every sheikh that they say is a mubtada, you have to also say mubtada. Even Fawzan, Fawzan, you have to say mubtada. And the opposite goes when you water down. You will end up finding yourself sitting with people who are clear cut mubtada. Like in the way to get out of there, seek knowledge and follow the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. May Allah Jalla wa'ala preserve all of you. Wallahu ta'ala alam wa ahkam billahi tawfiq. Inshallah, Shaykh Abu Salam is going to go into the last lection, lecture. He's going to summarize it, inshallah, because you've heard all of the shubahat anyway. And then maybe we can have no question and answers. Wallahu ta'ala alam wa ahkam.